Welcome, I'm Dr. Patrick Engler, and this is So You Want to Distort the Clarinet. And today we're going to be talking about, well, using distortion with the clarinet. So as you can see, there's a lot of extra equipment behind me that you don't normally see for a clarinet presentation. But hopefully by the end of this, you're going to have an idea of how all this works to get that distorted clarinet sound. And we're going to get into what exactly that means in just a moment. But the goal of this presentation today is to talk about the concepts related to the clarinet and all this equipment and how that's going to get you your desired sound. And we're going to take the stance that no sound is undesirable given the right context. So we're not going to say that certain things are good or bad necessarily. We want to get build the skills to get the sound that you want rather than just putting all the wires together and what comes out comes out. So this is a huge topic to try and cover in just 20 minutes. Uh, you ask any guitar player about distortion pedals and you'll get a 300 page dissertation. Um, so we're just gonna have to cover some of the basics. So for you experienced electronics users out there, there may be some concepts that will help you with what you're doing and with your experience, but for the most part, and here's your disclaimer, this is a beginner to intermediate level presentation. We're gonna be talking about exactly what you need to get into using electronics and some basic concepts with that. So just so you know, this is a more entry level presentation. So if you know what you're doing, then you can probably skip ahead to some of the good stuff. So we'll see you there. So let's go over all the things you need to play along at home if you so choose. First thing you need, obviously, is your clarinet. The next thing you'll need is a microphone, and we'll talk about these in a little bit. Next, you obviously need something to distort the sound with, and this presentation is going to focus on using guitar pedals and amps, so the hardware side of things, but you could just as easily use software if you want. Finally, the fun part of playing with distortion is getting to play loud, and to do that you need an amp. My setup's a little more complicated with separate amplifier heads and cabinets, but you can just as easily use a combo amp where those two are together in one package. So the first order of business is to define what we're doing when we distort the sound. The best way to do that, with an example. So, what we're doing is going from this, So what's happening here? Well, we're boosting the signal, as in making it louder, in a sense. We're boosting the signal to create what's known as clipping. So let's take a look at some sound waves to show exactly what that is and what's happening. Here's a sound clip of an example similar to what I just played. Give a quick headphone warning, but let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So on the left is the example without distortion, and on the right is the example with distortion. Let's zoom in and see what's going on with each one. So here we're zoomed in on the not distorted portion of the clip. And you can see the wave here, and on either side you have a little bit of space, and that's what's known as your headroom. And that's going to keep the signal clean and prevent what's known as clipping. And that's where the distortion is going to come from. When you max out that signal and you take up your headroom and you cause the signal to clip. Now let's look at the distorted signal to see what's happening. So with this clip, this is the distorted example, you can see that that signal is maxed out, taking up all that headroom, causing the wave to square off and thus clip and distort. And when this happens, not only are you distorting your fundamental, but you're also adding harmonics, which further distorts the signal. Here we've got both the 
not distorted and distorted examples, one on top of the other, not distorted on the top, distorted on the bottom. And you can see the comparison between the two. On the top, we still have some headroom. On the bottom, we've taken that up and we're clipping that signal off, causing distortion. So you may be wondering why the initial example I played in video was a little bit different sounding than the ones that I just played demonstrating clipping. So let's take a listen and just get a reminder of what that initial sample sounded like. The difference is that in that initial sample and the one you just heard, I was playing through an amplifier which added in some headroom, as you can see in this clip, compared to the clipping examples where I recorded directly from the pedal to better demonstrate how clipping works. So before we get talking about some of the other equipment we'll be using, first going to talk about some of the characteristics of the clarinet, just some food for thought when you're trying to get that distortion tone going. So obviously the clarinet's not a guitar. Acoustically, it's considered a pipe closed at one end, and that has a couple implications for this. One is we have a unique harmonic spectrum. So the rule of thumb is that we have the odd numbered harmonics. That doesn't mean that even ones aren't present, it's just that they're not as well supported. So what we may want to do is use a little more distortion to help make up for that lack of harmonics. Clarinet also has a different envelope, so we'll have a more consistent attack and sustain and no decay after the air stops. So you may want to play around with that to get the full effect with the distortion. And finally, we'll always have a little bit of that acoustic clarinet sound as part of the overall sound structure. The next two points will make a little more sense once we talk about the types of microphones we can use, but a couple more things to consider is that sound doesn't transmit well through the body of the instrument, and that the sound will project from the first open tone hole. So let's look at some microphones and get a better idea of what we can use to capture that clarinet sound. To get your clarinet sound or the signal, to the amplifier or the software that you're using, you're gonna to need to use a microphone. And here we have three different varieties. And we'll go through and talk about how each of these works and how that would make it suited or not ideally suited to using with distortion. And here we have a standard microphone that you're gonna mount on a stand or on a clip on the instrument. And this is going to capture your sound as it's projected from the instrument, whether it's close mic, meaning it'd be right up on the instrument, or a little bit further away. And so because of that, it's also going to pick up some of the sounds of the room, some more than others, depending on quality and the pattern and the style of microphone that you're using. Um, so that makes it not quite as ideal for using with distortion because when we're using distortion, remember we're boosting that signal to create the clipping. So it's gonna make it easier for it to start feedback because it's capturing all that boosted sound, all that boosted signal. So you can use these with distortion, but I don't find them as suited to it because it's much easier to feedback with them, you need to be a lot touchier with your, with your settings, and you can't get quite as much gain or distortion when you're using one of these. In the center, we have a ported pickup microphone, which connects and taps into the bore of the instrument, so it picks up the sound on the inside of the instrument, and based on the design and how this works, it's a little bit more isolated than your standard microphone over here. And you can, you can do it usually in the barrel. Uh, for bass clarinet, I have one that I put into the mouthpiece, just so I didn't have to solder something to the neck. But regardless of where it is, you're going to have it tapping into the bore of the instrument, getting you a little bit more of an isolated sound. On the negative side, that means you are going to have to retrofit 
or to some of you damage your equipment and you, or use something different that may not be what you're normally used to. Um, but in my opinion, the benefit of isolation and preventing feedback, allowing you to get a little more saturated distortion sounds is uh, much more preferable than the standard microphone. Finally, over here, we have a little bit more of a unique option. So this is a contact pickup microphone, and this one works by attaching to the body of the instrument. So the benefit of this one is it is very cost effective. I think compared to these two, this is just a small fraction of the cost. Um, but the, the issue with this one is it's a flat surface trying to connect to a curved object, which makes it not quite ideal. It's a little more finicky. Um, and sound-wise, remember, the body of the instrument doesn't transmit sound very well. So unless you put it right on the ligature, so you're picking up the signal at its strongest, you're not going to get as full of a sound or as clarinet-like of a sound as you will with these other two options. Considering we are going to be distorting the sound and we want to prevent feedback as much as we can, I recommend using the barrel microphone since you still maintain a pretty um, authentic clarinet sound while also getting good isolation and feedback prevention from the style. Now we'll get into some of the different types of distortion that you'll find. And again, this presentation is geared more towards the hardware side, using pedals and amps rather than software, but there is a lot of carryover. So distortion is kind of an umbrella term for a few different effects, all of which do the same thing, but to varying degrees, as you can see on this slide. So the four main types that we'll cover are boost, overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. And as I put on there, that kind of goes from mild to wild. So let's get into each one and see how those work with the clarinet. We'll start on the mild end of the spectrum with boost. And as the name implies, this will just give your signal a little bit of a boost. And oftentimes, this won't add distortion in of itself. You'll really have to crank it and drive the amp that you're using to get distortion rather than getting it from the pedal itself. And because of that, I don't really recommend using boosts with clarinet because you're not gonna get any real difference to the sound as we'll see right now. All right, so let's get an idea of what the boost is going to sound like. I'll give an example first without any, then an example with it at about 50%, and then we'll crank it to get the most extreme effect that it will do. Next on the list is the overdrive, and while a boost can push an amp to distortion, an overdrive is really meant to do that. So it's going to be more aggressive of a boost than a boost, and you're more likely to get that distortion from the amp. However, it's not really going to distort your sound on its own, and that's why I say it's a little bit more difficult to use if you're just getting into it, because you really have to know the interaction between the pedal and the amp to get that more distorted sound with the clarinet. So now the example of the overdrive. And again, first will be clean, second will be at 50%, third will be fully cranked. <laughs>
So here you can hear more breakup than we got with the boost, so that's more distortion. Um, and this is actually a little bit harder and more aggressive of an overdrive pedal as it is, but the difference between 50% and full wasn't that noticeable because mainly what we're doing is increasing our signal and driving the amp rather than breaking it up in the pedal itself. More aggressive still is the distortion pedal. And distortions and overdrives actually have a lot in common. And the main distinction I'll draw is that distortion pedals give you more distortion from the pedal itself rather than the overdrive, which relies on driving the amp to clip and louder volumes to get distortion. So because of that reason, I recommend distortions for use with clarinet a little bit more. Uh, I think they're a little bit easier to use to get that really distorted sound without going too crazy with the volume. Uh, but that being said, just do your research on your distortion pedal or your overdrive pedal of choice, since there's a lot in common and one may be more aggressive than the other. Now let's hear from the distortion pedal. <laughs> manufacturer that will make one more aggressive than the other. So if you could hear at 50%, we just got a little bit louder. We didn't get too much distortion. Whereas when we cranked the distortion on this pedal, it got a lot more breakup. And that's because we're getting more distortion from the circuit rather than driving the amp. For the most extreme distortion sounds, you're going to want to use a fuzz. And these are my personal favorite because there are so many crazy sounds that you can get very easily with them. And compared to the other pedals, these are really meant to get you that lo-fi crazy sound. And so I recommend these if you want a very noticeable difference from your acoustic clarinet tone in the room. Finally, we'll hear from the fuzz pedal. <laughs> So the final part of the equation, at least for this presentation, is the amplifier. And when we're talking guitar amps, you got two basic varieties, tube or solid state. Tube amps are generally pricier and the tubes need to be replaced, which is an added cost over time, compared to the solid state amps, which due to the components are offered at a more reasonable price. Tube amps will also have a more specific sound compared to solid state amps, which can also have different effects or models built in. But the main thing to consider when we're using distortion and the clarinet is what tube amps are famous for, which is that natural overdrive that you get from the tubes. And you'll have a much better result from using boost and creating that natural distortion compared to a solid state amplifier, which will give you a much harsher sound when you use boost and try to drive the amp with a pedal. So that unfortunately brings us to the end of the presentation. And as I probably said many times throughout, we've really only been able to scratch the surface, uh, but I wanted to try and throw in as many different facets of using distortion with the clarinet as I could. So hopefully 
you got some new ideas and new techniques that you can use to go explore electronics and the clarinet and using distortion. Uh, so if you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out with, via email or if it's a quick one, and there may be a chat feature if it's like Clarinet Fest. Uh, I want to thank the new music committee, especially Dr. Gardner, for uh, allowing me to submit this for the new music weekend. So thank you very much for tuning in and go explore distortion now.